I'm ready to go. Yeah, great, great. So let's uh, start uh, from the good news first. So the new album, No Good Left to Give, is coming out later this month, actually. So let's uh, start with what kind of process was making of the album? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, first of all, we're all super excited about it. It comes out in um, just over a week, which is like crazy to think about because it's been, you know, like something that we've been working on for so long. So to have it finally be like almost time to put it out, it's like kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, man, like we're we're super pumped. I mean, the, the album itself, um, you know, our process with this album was a little different than our, our previous records just because um, a lot of this album was like something that we were trying to navigate writing while being on tour um, and trying to like, you know, find time in our busy days to like sit down and, and write. And sometimes that worked out and other times it didn't. So it was like for, you know, since we've been so busy the last five years and we've been touring so much, um, we had to like specifically make time where we were like, okay, we're not gonna, um, we're not gonna tour for this portion of the year so that we can focus on just writing, just recording, because it was getting too complicated being on the road and trying to write music. And so that's what we did at the end of 2019. We had like one big tour early 2019. Um, I think we, we might've even done like a UK tour early last year too, but either way, we, we had like, our touring was done by the end of the spring. And then we'd spent summer and fall recording or well, writing the whole record and then recording all of it with the intent of, you know, being able to tour on it all of 2020. Uh, but we all know what happened and, and then we couldn't tour on it all of 2020. So, um, you know, we, we basically, we took the time out from touring and, um, pretty much every single day, it was just like, all we did was like, think about writing music and get together and write music. And, uh, you know, we treated it like a, like you would treat any job, you know, we would get up and starting at nine in the morning, we'd be working on, on music until the end of the day. And that's just how we had to, you know, go about it because, um, we were more limited in time. I feel like on this record, you know, with feel something we wrote for like, maybe like a year and a half total before we recorded. And then with No Good Left to Give, we only wrote for like six months. Um, and so it was like the, the timing was a lot quicker, but at the same time, it's like our writing style and just like how cohesive we are as a band has become so much more streamlined and so much more efficient, I feel like, just because we've done it for so long now um, that, these songs came together so much faster than anything we've ever written. And also like when it came time to get into the studio, instead of having like a few songs done and, and, you know, a bunch of ideas, we had straight up like 18 songs, like written, ready to go. And we were just like, all right, cool. Like, let's just go in and see which ones are the best. And then, yeah, we ended up cutting like six songs and then only recording the best ones. And then those, those ones that we chose that were the best, we, changed and, and worked on so that they could be even better than they were and stuff and it was awesome man i mean um yeah it was great our whole our whole writing process was just like really efficient this time around and uh yeah it was cool okay uh as you said that you were like very busy with touring and everything at the time when this uh, album was uh, written and done so how is it to put an album out in a time like this when uh well, uh, touring is not possible. So how is it, you know, uh, uh, putting album out? It's scary, you know, like it's, it's definitely something that <clears throat> I don't think any of us could have ever really expected or planned for, you know, like it's one of those things that's just like, you have to roll with the punches, you know, um, obviously this is not the ideal time. Sorry. There's like a plane going by. I don't know if it's loud. Um, there, this is not the ideal time to be putting out music period you know this it's not an ideal time to be doing anything but in a world that relies so heavily on us being able to travel and being able to play shows in different cities every night and being able to reach fans through physical like in-person events and and touring and, and just all that stuff you know it's like 
it's so nerve wracking going into an album cycle and being like, we don't know when we're going to tour again. We don't know when these songs are going to be played live. We don't know if these songs will ever be played live. We don't know if these songs will, by the time shows come back, what if we already have another show, like another album out? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, there's so many what ifs. There's so many potentials that could happen, and no one has any idea what it's going to be or what it's going to look like. And so, that's like, I don't know. It's scary. It's it's definitely something that we've had to sort of come to grips with, and and just you know, like I said, roll the punches. And we're gonna do everything that we can, everything in our power to like make sure that we're still having some sort of interaction i guess like with our fan base you know we're we're planning on doing like some live stream event type things um you know working on doing like special giveaways and and just like interactive things that we can do with our people because you know i i think that's something that these fans especially need during this time is like you know that it's crazy because like with this world of music, it becomes such an escape for people, you know, it becomes such a release. It's, it's something that's so therapeutic for so many people. And the fact that like, we can't have that right now is like very tough. Um, so yeah, we're going to do our best to kind of um, do what we can, but I don't know. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, about the album, like, uh, as you said, that you got to basically choose the best songs to put on the album. So do you have any favorites in there or like uh, songs with special meaning for yourself? Yeah, I mean, every single song means a lot to me. All of my writing is like very personal and, and based on whether it's my experiences or based on the experiences of those around me, like every song that I write is like super meaningful to me. Um, so it's really hard to choose my favorites, but um, I think that probably my, my number one favorite track on the album is Skin to Skin, um, which is the single that just came out, like the last single that came out. Um, just because to me, that song has such a different vibe than, than most of what we've put out in the past. Uh, to me, it feels very like nostalgic, but also fresh and new and like different. Um, plus, it's just like really catchy. Like I find myself getting my own song stuck in my head, which is like pretty crazy for me because I usually hate listening to or hearing my own music. So it's like, yeah, it's 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 one of those songs where I was like, I'm really proud of how that song ended up based on how it started because when we started writing that song it was almost like we were just fucking around like it wasn't even really that serious like Ira our guitar player was just like fucking around with a riff and he was almost doing it as a joke because it kind of sounded at first it sounded really ridiculous because it has that repetitive guitar riff in the beginning what that's just like do 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 and like at first it sounded crazy because he had like all these like wacky effects and stuff on it but i i was like listening to it and i was like yo like, like if we made this cool like this is really sick and so we did and, and we just like we kind of made it more tasteful and to me that like changed the whole vibe of the song and then once we put it all together, I was like, dude, like, this is a, this is a banger. You know what I mean? Like this, this has to be on the record. And yeah, that one ended up becoming my favorite song on the whole album. And yeah, I'm so stoked about it. I would love to kind of continue with that sound in future uh, movements stuff. Okay. And uh, as you said, it's a kind of weird time to be putting an album out, but uh... Like, uh, do you have any thoughts how this Corona time could change music industry in a whole, like uh, from the movement's point of view? Like, is there any good outcome to come from this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about good outcome. I have definitely been looking at all of the the bad outcomes that could happen. I mean, I've been I've been nervous about our industry as a whole you know, being smaller bands, being bands that thrive on um, intimate club settings and, and venues that are oftentimes not run by, by you know, bigger corporate promoting, uh, it, basically like, you know, the venues that aren't run by Live Nation or, uh, you know, the, the bigger 
corporate music venues and stuff throughout the country and throughout the world like those small venues that are going to be like you know what we would call mom and pop which is just like like small privately owned like um independent venues i've already seen so many of these mom and pop venues like going out of business because they just they cannot afford to stay afloat in a time where live events aren't happening um and we we've seen it we i mean every pretty much every city that we've ever played in has had at least one venue that's shut down so far which is crazy you know um and and that's really scary because a lot of the bands in our scene movements included you know we're not a huge band we're not playing stadiums we're not playing these giant 5000 cap rooms you know we thrive in rooms that are anywhere from 200 cap to you know maybe 2000 cap depending on the city but it's like that in between that 500 600 700 like those smaller rooms are where we really really thrive and where we have come up in and where so many of our peers thrive and that could seriously hurt the touring community because it's like these are small bands that can't afford to go play a 3000 cap room and only sell 200 tickets you know what i mean like th these are bands that can't stay afloat with only having big venues available to them um and and then that i mean that that's not just the band i mean then that goes back to like you know the booking agents who are losing their jobs because they they can't book their bands the management who's losing their jobs because their bands aren't making any money so they can't make any commission the labels who are losing money because there's nothing to push there's nothing that we, they can do there's no return on that investment so it's like the whole the industry i mean in my opinion there's a risk for the industry to co sort of collapse um which i hope doesn't happen i i would hope and and pray that that is something that would be the absolute worst case scenario but it is a reality that it, that we kind of have to think about in this time which is scary you know none of, i don't think any of us would have ever expected something like this to happen in our lifetime um so yeah man it's weird it's definitely spooky. Um, if if anything, I think the positive outcome from something like this is that if slash when these shows do get back to normal, I think that attendance is going to be through the roof because I think people are going to appreciate it so much more. But that's only if there is an effective vaccine because we don't want tons of people in a room putting themselves in danger so you know if there's an effective vaccine and everybody's cool with it uh i think that yeah i think that attendance for shows is just gonna fucking skyrocket and i think kids are gonna be so much more grateful for the shows that do come through that they won't be like oh i'm not gonna go to the show tonight like i'm just not really feeling it it's like everybody's gonna be like we've been to shows in so long we have to go to the show you know what i mean so yeah yeah for sure yeah, let's go into something a bit more positive then. And uh, well, let's talk about uh, like your activism. Uh, for example, you are donating a portion of proceedings from the new album to the Solutions Project. And uh, you had uh, collaborations with the Alzheimer's Association in the past, for example. So how big thing is activism for movements? It's huge, man. I mean, I, and this is the thing is like, I am such a firm believer that like, if you have any sort of platform, uh, if you have the ability to reach people, if you have the ability to, to put a message into the world that is going to do good for somebody, like you should be using that platform to the most of its ability. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, you know, obviously when we started this band, we didn't expect it to get huge or, or really even have any sort of success. Um, and, the fact that we've seen so much, I mean, we have almost 100,000 Instagram followers. That's almost 100,000 people that we can reach every single day and, and say something, right? We can do something that will make a positive difference. And that's just on Instagram, right? I mean, the amount of people who actually listen to our band and support what we do is probably much higher than just what our Instagram reflects. So in my opinion, like, if there's a way that we can be doing something good using the the 
you know, the business that we have established, then like, we're going to take every opportunity we get. And so obviously, you know, with the state of things in um, the world right now, obviously being bad, but especially in the United States, I mean, we're in the midst of the biggest civil rights movement that our generation has ever seen, or that this country has probably seen in the last 50 years. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where it's like, there's been an immense amount of division that has come from that. But there's also been a huge amount of solidarity and companionship and like brotherhood that has come from all of this. And we want nothing more than to just like support the causes that we believe in and support, you know, the fact that we do believe that Black Lives Matter. We do believe in equality for women and for trans uh, people and for everyone in the LGBTQ community. Like we, you know, we believe in equal rights, period. And we're going to support that in any way that we can. And now we also believe in climate change and we believe that we need to be doing more as a species, regardless of whatever fucking political view you have or whatever your, you know, your ideas are about how shit works in the world. None, nothing is going to work if our planet is no longer able to sustain life. And so what we wanted to do for the release is to combine those two things um, you know, which is how we basically came um, across the Solutions Project because they work in the climate crisis sector. They they fund programs that are not only you know uh, working towards climate change, like awareness and like and like helping climate change, but they put an emphasis on organizations that are led by women, organizations that are led by people of color. You know, organizations that are tackling multiple um issues at once and to us that was something that was really really important um so yeah i mean basically from now or i mean from i don't know like six months five months ago until the end of whenever this band stops being a band we are going to donate a portion of literally every fucking penny that we make right and even if we only like if there was a month where we only made a hundred bucks god forbid we made a hundred bucks one month right we'll donate five dollars to that hundred bucks right each of us will walk away with like after everything is said and done after we've paid our taxes after we fucking whatever we might only walk away with three dollars in our pockets right but we still donated that five dollars because we're we're committed to seeing that change we're committed to doing anything that we possibly can and no matter what there's always going to be some amount some portion that we can afford to donate to a cause to do better for the world to do something for our our society and we're always going to do that like period um because we just we just care that's at the end of the day like we just care about seeing these changes happen um we're not about advocating for stuff and then letting it fall through the fucking cracks like we don't believe in that we are like we're in this until fucking death like this is this is just what we believe in and we're, we'll die on that hill you know so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's really great um uh like well uh this might be going in a bit of a tangent but like uh you, like you said you there's not really uh like good scenarios for for example for music business but uh one thing that seems to be heightened at this time is the activism of people do you think that's because like the background noise of normal living has kind of quieted down and people are maybe starting to see that there's a lot of shit in our lives that we don't want or need or I mean, it's very possible that that is the reason. Um, but at the same time, I think it's just like this sort of shit has gone on for so fucking long. And it's and it's finally, I think, getting the recognition that it deserves. We're finally seeing some real like, I, I mean, like I said, this is this is quite literally the biggest civil rights movement that we have seen in our generation so far. Um, and I think that that is really really important and yeah i mean i think i think you're right i think that to a degree there could be you know the 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 idea that um since nothing else is going on right now since everyone is kind of in this lull of like the world is sort of like sort of at a standstill because of coronavirus that that maybe it's given these uh civil rights movements sort of that um 
ability to cut above everything else and be the most important thing. But I would also like to hope that even if the world wasn't as crazy as it is right now with the pandemic, and even if the world was at a normal uh, point, that we would still be seeing these movements in action um, because it is very important. And it, and it is something that, that regardless of what's happening in the world, regardless of what's going on, that people should be rallying for and people should be getting together to do these things. And, and you know, like it, it sucks because it is a bummer that this had to happen during a global pandemic, right? Because people are worried about going out to protests because they could be exposing themselves to getting sick, which is a very legitimate concern. Right. Like there is a there there is a and, and to the people who are immunocompromised and don't feel comfortable protesting because of that, like, like I get it. I totally get it. Right. Um, but at the same time, like to me, like certain things are worth risking your life over. Right. Certain things are worth putting yourself in a position that could be compromising. And for me, the idea that I am going to a protest and I'm going to do something that's hopefully going to help change the world, change our government, change our, uh, how, how our country runs. If that means that I'm putting myself at a position where I could potentially get a life-threatening disease, I'm okay with it because I got that disease doing something that was for the betterment of the rest of the world. If you're going to fucking restaurants and you're going to bars and you're being irresponsible, it's not worth risking your fucking life over. It's not risk. It's not worth risking the spread. But if you're going somewhere that's going to promote saving innocent black bodies or that's going to promote equal rights for trans women or 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 trans people, period, or any of literally any variety of, of these civil rights movements that are happening right now, I believe that it's worth risking your life for. And no one, no one has to agree with me on that. I don't care if you see it differently, but in my personal opinion, it's like, I will risk my life for that because that's what I care about. And so, I don't know, that, that was kind of like a roundabout way of answering your question. But I think at the end of the day, like these are, I'm glad that the world is starting to see a shift even if it just means like i mean who knows who, maybe nothing even comes from these these protests right and and i hope and i pray to god that that's not true but i genuinely believe that like we are making a difference we are making a change and that's something that i'm going to keep doing so yeah yeah good yeah yeah uh, we like rants <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, yeah let's uh, uh bring it uh back to movements then because uh yeah like you said like nobody knows the future but what is uh the very next thing for movements well um i mean i think the, the next step right now is just to try and like at least plan to have a tour in the works right like if if we can get a a basic idea together of like okay we want to put together a tour for this time frame next year right whether that be spring of 2021 whether it's summer whether it's fall like we're going to try to plan a tour for next year um and and we're just going to play it by ear you know if it happens and it's safe for it to happen then then we'll go through with it if it's something that we once you know what once it gets down to it and we're maybe a month or two months out and we're feeling like it's still not the right time then then we won't um, but we're going to try. And I think that it's important that the music industry at least tries to get back into the swing of things, it at least tries to put together these events, regardless of whether or not they end up happening. Because I think that's the only way that we're going to be able to transition back into um, normal, you know, touring scenario. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's what's next. Uh, like I said, we have we have like some live stream events that we're gonna do. We have, um, I guess that's kind of it. I guess yeah, just like live streaming and and pushing the album as much as we can without being on the road. Um, and if it ends up being too long before we can get back on tour, then we'll just write another album. <laughs> we'll just try and put out more music. You know, um, we're all trying to. You know, we all have different side hustles that we're working on too, which we're you know hoping to 
help keep us afloat financially. Um, it definitely sucks going from paying your bills with music to not being able to pay your bills with music anymore. And it's been rough, but um, yeah, you know, we're, we're taking the punches as they come and we're just kind of, we're just going to see what happens. I don't know. I couldn't even begin to tell you what the next steps are because I just don't know. Okay. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you having me. Thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for doing what you do. <laughs>